The Superblocks application backend consists of one or more backend APIs. These APIs consist of one or more steps. A step is similar to a serverless function. It could be a database query to any database, such as Postgres, Mongo, or Snowflake, an API call via REST or GraphQL, or business logic in Python or Node.js. UI components can render our backend API responses, like we see in the dropdown here. Backend APIs can be triggered on a page load or by a UI event, such as a button click, a dropdown option change, or even a row select in a table. In this e-commerce order management support application, we'll create a new backend API to fill a grid with our orders. We'll set that API to run when the dropdown changes and on a page load. We'll call it get orders and use the demo Zendesk integration that comes pre-configured with every new Superblocks account as our first step. Start by naming our first Zendesk step, get Zendesk tickets. We'll set this function to grab our ticket requester ID from Zendesk using the value in our dropdown. Superblocks APIs can take inputs by referencing a component value from the front end. The back end will receive a snapshot of those values as inputs before it runs. Let's run this step to see the API response from Zendesk. Next, we'll add a step to query our demo Postgres database called get orders for tickets. We'll write a query to get all of the furniture orders associated with the ID we got from the previous call to the Zendesk API in our last step. I'll run this so I can see the response. Our last step is to grab data from Snowflake. I'll add a new step and call it get shipping status so we can get the shipping status, running it to see our response. I'll wrap things up with a final Python step. I'll name it merge orders. I can easily join all of our data together using a single Python function. Notice how our Python function auto-completes with the data from our previous step in addition to letting us see the format of that data as we write our Python logic. Before running our completed backend API so we can hand data over to our front end, I'll set an on success event handler to display an alert, letting the user know that data has successfully loaded. Both the on success and on error event handlers can be fully customized, triggering any number of available action types, such as alerting a user or even sending an email or running another backend API. I'll wrap things up by attaching my backend API to render out into a component in the front end. In this case, I'll add it to a grid. Our API response will be rendered out now on the front end. I'll also attach this API to the onChange event in our dropdown. When we change our dropdown, it'll rerun our backend API, displaying our onSuccess function and updating our grid. Now, I'll switch into preview mode to see how an end user would experience our application. Since this API currently runs on page load, we'll see our onSuccess handler trigger straight away. If our application had failed at any step, this would have triggered the onError event handler. We'll also see it run when we change our dropdown, since it triggers our backend function. Backend APIs in Superblocks are run on a Superblocks agent, either in the Superblocks cloud or on your own network, by utilizing our on-premise agent. This means that a JavaScript step executed as part of a backend API runs server-side code in a Node.js environment, which is separate from any JavaScript code running in the front end. Running backend APIs server-side allows for fast performance and elastic scalability, even when working with extremely large data sets. With Superblocks, you can take advantage of your existing integrations and APIs to write any business logic in your favorite programming language to quickly build the internal tooling your team needs in minutes.